Yeah, I might have to stop that cat. Welcome to the channel. So today is a video which I've done two videos before, very similar, covering the sort of topic, but this is, a, I guess, a take three. I will put links up there of both videos. One here was done a long time ago, so the quality isn't great, but it does cover some good topics. And the other one here, which I did quite recently on how and why I went to zero drop shoes. But the topic is really about trainers with uh, spacious shoes and all really for people with a, let's say, wider feet or Morton's neuromas or even plantar fasciitis or bunions uh, and then indirectly hip pain, knee pain, all those issues because I found going to zero drop helped with, with, with wide space toe boxes and, and wide space shoes um, helped everything. They helped with the Morton's neuroma which meant immediately which is basically the swelling of the nerve underneath the metatarsals. It helped with the hip pain and knee pain. Well I didn't have any hip pain but it helped with knee pain and my left knee which I've talked about in my second video. But in the last three or four months, if you know me, if you know my channel, then you will realize that um, I've been having a bit of heel pain, which I didn't really think was plantar fasciitis, but I'm about 99% sure it is. So in the last six weeks, I've been recording everything from my runs and how I feel the next day in the shoe that I was wearing. And I've done a lot of sort of detailed analysis of all that. And to cut it short, um, I thought it was the zero drop shoes that were actually causing the heel pain because they, I thought there was just not enough cushion under the heel. That was just completely wrong, but that's what kind of made sense to me. Um, so I, I quit wearing zero drop shoes and I put, got myself back into Salomons and Hockers and Nikes. It's very, very comfortable and I all love, love the shoes to pieces and they, some of them are brilliant shoes, but I kind of fell back into that sort of old trap of getting too, too involved with the hype, the belief of the tech and, the, and just, just got to, forgot about the joyful, wonderful play, feel, of wearing zero drop shoes with space because that those are the shoes that cured my Morton's neuroma they, they stopped my left knee from hurting after sort of 90 minutes and just they, those are the shoes that make me feel like I'm running like a kid playful upright posture really just nice high cadence and just moving through the woods perfect well not perfectly but I think it looks pretty good or feels good so wearing all the other new shoes the Salomons the Hawkers the Knights etc some of them are okay some of them really weren't. One in particular, unfortunately, the Salomon Ultra Glide is just too narrow for me. Um, and that did start to cause the heel pain again. So that, and I had the exact same pain, and there was pain coming from other shoes. So I realized it's not the drop of the shoe. It must be to do with the fact that it's the tapering of the shoe. Going into real detail and looking at the anatomy of the foot, I won't try and regurgitate all that information that I sort of kind of learned. But all I do know is that when the big toe gets switched across, it does can cut off a uh, supply to, of blood to certain areas of the foot, which then can cause things like plantar fasciosis, I think it is, which is like the deadening of, of certain materials in, in, in the foot, which can cause pain. Just to, you know, to keep it really simple, I realized that going back to the drawing board, going back to zero drop is just the safest and best thing for me. Um, and I realized that, you know, when it comes to the shoes with the ultras and the tips, for instance, now a lot of my running in the zero drop shoes was in the tip. Uh, because I love their midsole and love the feel of it so much. But as you can see here, they blew up after about 150 miles. So then I bought the Timp 3 and continued riding the Timp um, because of that zero drop feel and that Quantic midsole, which is awesome. But the thing is, these are actually, unfortunately, just too narrow. For me anyway. The older Timp, Timp 1.5, this has got a lot more space, a lot more room. So then when old sort of Altronians or people who used to call, whatever you call, call them, switch from ultra from yesteryear into ultra here, they're gonna find that these are a lot more restrictive. So that's kind of why I believe they have blown up on the sides because the feet are actually pushing them out. So unfortunately the Timp's not gonna work with me now, but what I have been finding just an absolutely dream to run in here, which has quite surprised me, because this is much more minimal. And actually, I like the fact that it's more minimal. And I've even talk, I've even been experimenting with completely barefoot, but that's on a different video altogether. So this is the Superior 4.5. Superior 4.5 is perfect for this big, nice open toe box. Lots of rooms, lots of room for the toast display. A great ground feel, only about 20 mil of cushion. So that response, that feedback from the ground is awesome to create that nice playful feel when on some trails. 
21 millimeter stack height, but super soft, sort of a burrito style wrapping around in here. Not many overlays up here, good toe box for a bit of protection, but not many overlays. So there's just room up here for your feet to display and move around. Nice midsole, which is fine, it's perfect. I've actually just taken them out for a good long run right now. But also the uh, likelihood, touch wood, of rolling your ankle, twisting, etc., is much less. And just generally, you feel much more upright and secure with your big toe being able to push off and grounded. So I actually don't know where I am right now. And um, plenty of, you know, plenty of cushioning and protection. You know, I've, I've hit them on a hard, you know, rocky trails and they seem to work okay, you know, on here. So I would advise you that if you are a fan of the older tints, uh, the older sort of ultra shoes with more space, because I still feel even the Lone Peak, see, I still feel even the Lone Peak, as much as I love the shoe, it still has just a little, it's just not wide enough. And I know they have got, this is the five. I know they've got a five wide out now. I haven't got that because I just can't afford to buy every single shoe in the world. But so this one here, but again, it is, not, it is quite narrow. You know, it, it does get quite thin here, which isn't a huge deal for, for, for some people. But for me, my, my pinky toe, uh, you know, the side of the wide foot is, is pressing out on the side. And I guess also because they are, there are a lot more overlays, um, although this one is actually much better well built than the Timp, a lot more overlays, it's just restricting the foot. Very quick side note though, the uh, Superior 4.5s, I wouldn't recommend them on anything technical because of that lateral movement with inside the shoe. Uh, great for just easy plodding uh, and a bit of movement, but that was too much back there for these. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of movement, so the shoe for that in my idea, it would be the, uh, the King MT 2. So I can even go back to a very dirty here, Escalante. And it's the Escalante 1.5. I've still got the one. And the midsole here, this is 25 mil, I think, uh, is great. But again, it's very flexible. So great, not great for cornering or technical moves, but it just lets your feet splay and your toes really splay out. So I guess that's kind of the footwear almost sorted out. And then what really helped me with my plantar fasciitis was just a, a few really simple things. A, spending lots more time walking around the house barefoot. So literally just letting your feet completely splay out all the time and just getting your feet stronger. B, a lot of dorsiflexion. So crunching your toes down to stretch out the top, the muscles on the top of the foot. Uh, that really helps sort of alleviate the pain. And so you can do this sort of towel scrunching exercises where you're scrunching the towels up and up and up through there. Also, Real key point is try and get some of these socks as well, because the last thing you want to do is get spacious shoes, but then have them all cramped in and uh, they can't move. So yeah. And actually another tip is toe spaces. So these are only just a couple of pounds from us and this goes in between your big toe and the, the, uh, the next one and just allows your feet just to have a bit of space and open up. Um, I did try and do the, a lot of the foam roll, uh, this sort of lacrosse ball or the soft ball sort of rolling underneath my foot. But the problem was I think that just aggravates the problem even more. Um, I don't think you really want to target the actual plantar tissue if it's already been stressed enough and stretched out. You just want to leave that alone. I think the best thing to do is just to stretch and strengthen the other muscles around it. So, and then in turn, lots of Achilles and calf, hamstring and even glute stretches because obviously that's all linked up. So alleviating any sort of stiffness and tightness right up that posterior chain, that really helped. Long, long stretches. But to be honest, it doesn't really hurt that much. You know, in the morning, it's, now it's much less pain um, because I'm, I'm in the wider feet, the wider shoes again. And it really is. But I, and I've made meticulous notes on all of my, on how my foot feels the next day after training um, and also during training and even just an hour later when you get out of a car if you just come back because that's when I noticed it started to hurt when I've been sort of had the foot down and there was just not enough movement but yeah so movement blood flow stretching uh, some gentle light foam rolling but not like ball rolling underneath the foot but I wouldn't aggravate it too much lots of dorsiflexion there instead of the, you know, I know they do recommend the plantar flexion where you stretch back but I think you want to stretch open the muscles at the top it's a bit like when you stretch your hip flexors and your quads it helps you touch your toes more, which is slightly ironic because you think you have to touch your hamstrings. I guess that's how it works, but I'm not, you know, anyway, that's a different subject. Um, 
But yeah, so in regards to the shoes, now I'm, I'm really happy. So the, you know, superiors here, I'm really enjoying them. I'm enjoying that sort of playful feel. Uh, I can't, the Timps, I think unfortunately are causing, they cause a bit of an issue because I used to wear them so much. So the Olympus, they come into play, but very, very rarely. These are quite heavy shoes and I just don't really, I'm just tending to find that I'm gravitating towards the more lightweight minimal shoes, um, like so, and like the Escalante on the road. I'm really enjoying running in shoes with more minimal cushioning. Um, I kind of assumed it was cushion that I needed to protect the heel, but it's not, it's, it's just for me anyway, and this is a very, I, I guess people, are very subjective. Um, trainers to people are almost, is closely sort of related to diets. So I mean, people get almost offended if, uh, you know, you say something bad about their type of trainers. I'm not saying anything bad about other trainers. This is just what's worked for me because I do have slightly wider feet. And it has helped with my Morton's syndrome, it has helped with my plantar fasciitis, and that they've gone. And my knee as well, which I had knee pain about five years ago, that's gone, no knee pain in that, because I'm hitting the ground with much less impact, a much higher cadence, a much more upright posture, and just letting my foot, as I said before, letting my foot use its natural spring, its natural fascia, its natural elasticity uh, to do more work. Um, and this takes time. You can't just jump in from going from heavy shoes with lots of cushions and high stacks uh, and high drops to more minimal because your feet were just not, they're sort of just not used to it. So I guess, you know, you have to experience a little bit of pain, a little bit of stiffness, a bit of tightness in your heels and Achilles and your feet. But as I said before, once you're there, it's great. And it's really enjoyable because of that very playful, fun feel. Um, yeah. But what would be great is that if anyone's experienced exact same pains like the plantar fasciitis, and if they have tried to go with more zero drop shoes and more spacious shoes, and if it has alleviated that pain, I'd be really, really interested to hear what, uh, you know, if it has and how, and hopefully it's still okay. Um, also anyone who's had things like Morton's neuromas or if anyone's had issues with bunions or knee and hip pain, as I said earlier, I'd be really keen to hear about anyone who's also been, had success with using zero drop shoes, was using um, more spacious shoes to alleviate any issues they've had. So if this video can help anyone out there with similar issues, um, but I will say, as I said before, go easy, don't transition too quickly. Uh, if you're wearing big stack shoes, just take, you know, just try one a week, once a week wearing lower, lower shoes with lower dry, and then build it up over time. Because <clears throat> there is a real tendency for people to go full steam ahead and just to literally rip their calves, their Achilles, to not literally, hopefully, but um, just to stress them too much too soon because it's a lot more stress on the muscular system, but actually on the joints and things, it's much less stress because of the highest cadence, the more upright posture. And I think you're gonna get much more longevity as a runner um, like that. I'm not fast, I'm not very fast at all, but what I do like to do is go quite long and fairly easy. Uh, a couple of sprint sessions in a week maybe, but um, and uh, but I do, I, I do know of fast runners that have switched to zero, more zero drop shoes and their pace increased for the five and 10K, um, so which is great. So yeah, let me know. Anyway, hopefully that video has not gone on too long. I hope I haven't rehashed lots of things I've already said if you've already watched another video, but hopefully it helped. So there we go. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please do click that like button and subscribe. And I will see you soon. All right, take care. That cat is still annoying me, but you probably won't heard any of that cat. Right, see you soon. Bye bye.